making a mold of a complex anatomical model using silicone rubber and featuring advanced mold making techniques. Now this is the first part of a two part video tutorial. If you guys would like to check out the casting of this project, make sure you hit the link above and that will take you to the casting portion of this video. Now we are making a mold of a complex anatomical object and in this case it happens to be a bear skull that I found while hiking near the uh, mountains here in Pennsylvania. And uh, while I'm out hunting, I'm usually on the lookout for natural treasures like this. Also, I like to collect uh, crystals and minerals, as well as fossils that you can easily find here in nature. Now, the skull, when I found it, was actually in three parts, with the lower jaw being in two. And we're gonna show you how we fix that in order to make two separate molds. Now, our video today does have several goals. We wanna show you how to make a two-part cavity pour mold. We're also gonna show you how to successfully deal with the pass-throughs that would otherwise pose a complex challenge for making a mold of this piece. We're also gonna show you how to make a lightweight mold by making a cavity pour, as well as how to block out sections off your mold so that you can save on silicone mold making product. Now let's just jump into this project and see how it's done. If you would like to see the second part of this two part video tutorial, the cold casting of the bear skull, you can click in the link above and that will take you to the second half of this project. A model like this bear skull here will contain a lot of loose debris and dirt that's still attached to the skull and we want to remove as much of the debris as possible from our model so that it doesn't potentially end up in the mold that we're trying to create. Remember, we're creating a cavity pour mold where we're pouring silicone into a cavity and if we have loose debris on the model itself or inside of it, it could potentially end up in the mold itself. Now the next step is to actually fix some of the broken areas, um, the jaw bones uh, or, or the uh, bone that goes right around the eye here that's actually broken or has a connecting area and I want to connect those so I'm going to use some CA glue uh, to, to fill the void there, glue that together and then there's also a couple other thin areas that I glue together. So having CA glue on hand is really, really nice. And uh, the first thing that I have to do is fix up the lower jaw. And that means we had to glue it together using some super instant. I'm simply going to dispense some of the super instant into the back of this coffee cup and mix it thoroughly by scraping the sides and scraping the bottom. And then I'm going to apply it to the uh, area that we need to bond, the middle of the lower jaw. And that's going to be pressed together. The reason why I'm using the Super Instant is because it's a paste and as such has a much thicker consistency than the CA glue. The Super Instant is going to fill any cracks and voids between the two parts of bone and help us adhere them together. And then we're gonna set it up and let it cure for 10 minutes. Now, before you start any project, make sure that you study the subject. Understand how you're gonna go about your mold, about your project. First, it is evident that making a mold of the skull as a single piece is too complicated. It will be much easier to mold the top half separately including the upper jaw and mold the lower jaw separately. So making two separate molds. Uh, after studying the skull, I, I can see there is a hollow area that goes all the way through. So I'm gonna have to deal with that specifically. I can't make a mold off the interior of the skull. So some uh, passages here will have to be blocked. And after studying the skull some more, I decided that this is going to be a two-part cavity pore mold, separating left and right here. And it's going to be separated along the teeth line here, along the high points, the jawbone, to the back of the skull. After studying the lower jaw, I've decided that this is going to be a two-part block mold. 
and the separation line for this block mold is going to be along the high points of the uh, bone itself. So right here where I'm pointing with the finger and going around to the other side along the teeth line is going to be the separation line. Again, you should make these uh, decisions early on in the molding process and understand how the mold is going to come apart before you actually go to mold the piece and make sure that it makes sense that it will come apart the way you imagine it would. To fill any kind of voids, cracks, or hollow areas in the skull that I think the silicone will seep into, and could potentially mechanically lock our model. I'm going to fill it with some Chavant oil-based clay that is not only a different color and is easy to distinguish from the model, which makes it much easier to work. It's also a nice and firm oil-based clay that the warmth of my palm, my hand, makes much more malleable and workable. Now that the lower jaw has been glued together, we can go ahead and focus on filling any of the crevices, any of the holes with some Chavant oil-based clay, just like we did on the skull itself. Now, let's address those areas that are connected and hollow. We do need to plug those up, and for that, I'm basically gonna use some aluminum foil this is crumbled up and then stuffed inside those crevices to provide a base that the clay is going to sit on. I'm basically putting a clean cut uh, buildup of clay so that we can make a mold and that's where the rubber will stop. The blocked off area in the nasal cavity or the spinal cavity shouldn't be too deep so that the chunk of silicone that will fill that void doesn't go too far and becomes an obstacle when you're trying to remove the casting from the mold. You want to make sure that you can access the area with a tool in case you need to remove that back wall and create a more realistic casting. Now once uh, everything is plugged up, we can go ahead and seal our model. I'm using some Sonite wax for this. Uh, bone is very porous material and it will soak in some of that rubber and lock onto it. So to prevent that, we're gonna apply some Sonite wax. Make sure that you get the Sonite wax in deep crevices and the undercuts, such as these teeth cavities here up front, to make sure that the silicone won't adhere to the skull the same process is repeated on the lower jaw and we're going to apply the sonite wax to every crevice off the lower jaw and then allow it 20 minutes to soak in. Now once that is all plugged up we can go ahead and set up our uh, uh, model on a clay bed. Here I'm using the Sculptex uh, oil-based clay. This is the soft. Now I'm going to just follow the entire model and build up the clay bed for the first half of the mold and I'm being very strategic when building these things up so that uh, you have these steps on the sides uh, that are going to create extra keys and registrations and then uh, here in the back I'm adding a pour spout so this is going to become the pour spout later on so now that the main setup of the clay is complete, I can focus on the detail and I'm going to follow basically the entire uh, line up here and make sure that the line between the clay and the model is very crisp and clean. Interlocking terraces and keys in your mold setup like this will help minimize any kind of flashing that you will have in your castings, further helping and minimizing the work effort that you have to do on the post finishing of the casting itself. The tool I'm using here is called a caulking tool and generally used for silicone caulk. However, they come in different sizes, making them perfect for pressing keys into clay. Now the keys are pressed about quarter to half an inch away from the model, all the way around. And then we can go ahead and cover up the setup basically. Uh, remember, we're making a cavity pour mold, so we're going to make the outer shell, the support shell first. And here uh, I'm applying 
the Sculptex. Basically, this is a space holder. Uh, this is what will become the actual uh, rubber, silicone rubber mold afterwards. So we're placing this as a space holder. It's about three quarters of an inch thickness all the way around, and that's what we want to keep all the way throughout the mold. So here I'm just going to basically hug and, and squeeze the clay down onto the model, following the contours, uh, pushing it down, making, there's, uh, making sure there's no large crevices underneath. And once we have that set up, we can now lay out the delivery system and locking mechanism. These will be the keys that are holding the uh, rubber mold and the support shell. And also, this is going to be delivery channels for where we pour the silicone into the cavity, into our support shell. Here you can see that I'm attaching what looks like a pour spout to the very top of our clay buildup. And that's literally what it's going to become. This is going to be the pour spout where I'm going to pour the silicone into our cavity, while the pour spout for the mold itself is gonna be at the back of the head or the back of the skull. Again, uh, it takes some figuring out and understanding of the process and what this will look like when it's finished before you get there. So you should be able to uh, see the finished mold, so to say, before you actually make it. Now, before proceeding to making the support shell on our clay up here, I'm going to put some release agent. This is East Release 200. As always, you want to spray, brush spray to spread the release agent evenly throughout the entire buildup. Now the release agent is allowed 15 minutes to dry before proceeding on. For the support shell, I'm using the Freeform Air uh, for its uh, lightweight properties. At a thickness of an eighth of an inch, the material has a pot life or work time of about 120 minutes while at uh, inch plus it's going to have something like a 30 minute work time so keep that in mind a full cure is achieved after 24 hours i'm going to go ahead and uh, dispense some part a and part b this is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume and once I dispense the part A, I'm going to actually change my gloves. And this is not to cross-contaminate the material, the A and B. Drag some of the part A into the part B. Uh, once the part B is dispensed, I can go ahead and mix them two together. Uh, on a side note, this is my absolute favorite material to work with. It's really user-friendly. You can see I can just continue mixing it until it gets a uniform color. And that's when you know it's actually ready. You should not see any streaking in the material. So just like any other epoxy, the freeform air is mass sensitive. It does exotherm. It creates heat once you combine the part A and B together. This is what helps the material cure. Now, in order to slow down the exotherm, the heating up of the material, you can flatten the freeform air into pancakes and set them aside and just uh, use the material as you need it. Keep in mind that the freeform air sticks to itself very well, so you can work in smaller batches and mix up only as much material as you can actually handle in the given working time. And I'm simply going to start by pressing in the material onto the surface of the clay buildup that we did. Make sure to press firmly so to avoid any kind of air pockets that we could trap. And then work your way all around the model to get an even thickness coating. Once the material is applied at an even thickness all throughout, I can use a little bit of water to help smoothen out the outer layer. Material is now allowed a cure for 24 hours before proceeding on to the next step. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to prepare some buttresses for the support shell out of the leftover freeform air I have. I'm simply going to uh, make a rectangle, smooth it out a little bit, and then I'm going to cut them using a small mixing stick. 
Just cut it in a couple different sections, and you can see I'm cutting them in triangles. Now, I'm going to separate them away from each other so they don't bond, and let them fully cure for 24 hours. We can go ahead and demold the first half of our support shell. I'm slowly going to remove the freeform air shell that we created and expose that model. And now we can go ahead and slowly remove that clay that we built up. Remember, this clay that we're removing now is going to become the actual mold half. Again, here is the clay from the channels. Once all the clay is removed, I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol to remove the last remnants and scraps off the oil-based clay. And then what I'm going to do is drill some holes into that support shell. Basically, these are air vents that are going to allow the air to escape out of the cavity as we're pouring silicone into that cavity, creating this uh, what's known as a cavity pour mold. These air holes ensure a flow through of the silicone in the cavity and a thorough coverage of the silicone on the entire model. It will prevent any air bubbles from trapping inside that support shell as we're pouring silicone into it. These air vents are usually placed in high points where our air trapment is anticipated. Now the support shell is placed over our model and secure tightly into the Sculptex clay below and then I'm going to add a bead of the Sculptex clay all around making sure there's no leaks and then here where the uh, pour spout is going to be I'm actually going to put a little uh, plexiglass window so we can all see into the mold it's really nice to be able to see if the mold is filling for this bear skull mold, I decided to use the Dragon Skin 10 NV. This is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume. But what I really like about this product is that it's a very low viscosity, which means it mixes easily, it pours easily, and it degasses easily. It has a working time of 15 minutes and a cure of 75 minutes. The Dragon Skin 10 NV is dispensed by volume and can be combined in a clean mixing container. As always, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom of your mixing container. Even more important with these clear products where you can't see by color if you actually have a good mixture. So therefore, we're going to transfer it into a secondary clean mixing container. This is called a double mix and then mix it again, making sure to scrape the sides and scrape the bottom off that mixing container. The silicone can now get poured through the pour spout into our cavity, and as it starts to leak out of the air vents, we're gonna plug those up with some Sculptex oil-based clay, and we're just going to continue pouring the silicone until it reaches the very top, plugging up the air vents as we go. The material is now allowed to cure for 75 minutes. After the material has cured, we can go ahead and demold our uh, setup. Basically, we're going to remove all that uh, uh, clay that we uh, worked the model onto. So we're going to flip the entire thing upside down and then start by removing that build-up clay that we put the model on. We're going to keep the model itself, the skull inside, and the pore spout. So once that is set up, we can go ahead and cover the actual skull and then repeat that procedure, that laying up of the clay that's going to become the second half of the mold. So everything here that we're setting up eventually becomes the, the uh, rubber mold itself. Again, we want to squeeze this down, keep it close to the model. We're going to trim some away for the support shell. And once the base clay is built up, we can go ahead and focus on the layout of the keys or channels. These are going to help interlock the mold into the support shell. Once the channels are laid out, I'm going to go around with a 
clean sculpting tool, make sure that the edges are all clean and there's no air holes visible. Here are a couple extra keys going into the clay and then we're going to start uh, building up the support shell over our clay buildup. Make sure that you put some release agent on the clay itself. Again, this is a spray brush spray technique. Simply spray some Ease Release 200, brush it around with a dry brush, spray it again, let it dry for 15 minutes. So now that I'm uh, mixing up some freeform air for the second half of our support shell, I'm gonna go ahead and basically do the same procedure we did on the first half. We're looking for uh, equal thickness throughout the entire buildup of the freeform air. We're gonna spray a little bit of water and then help, uh, we're gonna use that water to help it smoothen out. So a little bit of water on the freeform air will help smooth out that texture. And now I can go ahead and use those uh, freeform air buttresses that I created so these buttresses here that we're applying to the support shell are going to support uh, the shell itself standing. So the support shell, the mold is going to be standing on these buttresses and supporting the mold. So the mold stands up and we can pour material into the back, into the pour spout and uh, easily handle the mold so we don't have to prop it up in buckets, um, have it balance on something. It simply sits on its own on these buttresses. So a little bit of planning in advance will help you in your casting process later on. Now this is allowed a full cure of 24 hours before proceeding on to the next step. The next step is to open the mold back up. We're going to remove that clay that we build up for the cavity. This takes a little bit of cleaning. Release agent is applied to the first half of our silicone mold. Again, East Release 205 is brushed onto the silicone and then allowed to dry for 15 minutes. In the meantime, we're going to drill air holes in the second half of our support shell, just like we did in the previous half. And we want to be strategic. We want to place these in the high points, or in this case, when you hold it upside down, in the low points of your support shell, so that the air can escape out of your support shell, out of the cavity, as you're pouring the silicone into it. A piece of the Sculptex clay is placed back into the pour spout area. We don't want to pour silicone in this area. We want to keep it clear. Uh, this is the pour spout for our silicone mold, so to say. The two halves of the support shell are now adhered together for a temporary bond using some hot melt glue. This is only for as long as we need it to have the silicone set up in the support shell. A little bit of the Sculptex oil blaze clay is rolled out into a string and then used to plug the entire perimeter off the two halves of the shell. Now we're going to go ahead and dispense our part A and part B of the Dragon Skin 10 V. Follow the same mixing procedure, make sure you double mix. We can then go ahead and pour the silicone into the cavity and just like we did previously, we're gonna plug the air vents with some oil-based clay as the material starts to leak out of them. We're gonna continue plugging those air vents as we fill the entire cavity. And once we do so, we're gonna allow the material to cure for 75 minutes. Now here, just going back into the support shell quickly because I uh, did not add the buttresses to the second half or the first half of the mold that we made really. So I'm going to add this afterwards with a little bit of extra of the freeform air. And now this is allowed air. As you can see here, the buttresses are on top of the mold, but once the mold is in use, that's going to become the bottom of our mold. That's what we're going to set up the mold on so that we can pour material into the mold while it stands on its own. The two halves of the support shell are now opened up to retrieve the finished silicone mold. 
Here you can see those air vents that we plugged up with the clay can now be trimmed back with a pair of scissors so they don't cause any issues when we try to put the rubber mold into the support shell. The two halves of our mold are now pulled apart to reveal the model itself. And we can go ahead and now fully demold that bare skull. Slowly that plug from the nose is pulled and there you have it. We have a fully functioning mold now. Now to the second half of our project, we're gonna be making a mold for the lower jaw, for which I decided I will be making a block mold, a two-part block mold. The lower jaw we prepped previously by gluing the two halves together and then proceeded to plug any of the holes and crevices and finally sealed it with some sonite wax to get it ready for the molding process. Now we can focus on building up a clay bed that the lower jaw will sit on. And I've already predetermined how this mold is going to be separated along which lines. And now I can just simply proceed to building up the clay and then adding some air and pore spouts for the first half of the mold. This is going to be a two-part mold, and here you can see that I separated it along the edges of the uh, jawbone itself. So it, you have to be very strategic to understand how this mold is going to come apart before you actually make it. I can go ahead to the next step, which is um, uh, basically putting a block mold together, and uh, that's going to be a mold box. So we're going to put a mold box around our model. And then I'm going to put a spacer block uh, in this area right here. The spacer's block of clay purpose is to take up space in the mold structure that would otherwise be filled with silicone. Now that will result in saving money on the silicone rubber as well as making the demolding of the castings out of that mold easier so I placed a spacer block here, again, using the Sculptex soft clay. This is an oil-based clay. And basically it's gonna keep this area from filling with silicone. An important thing to note here is that by placing this clay block in a tilted way, we created an air trap by the front teeth. So if we pour silicone in here, there's gonna be an air trapment in that front. So to remedy that, you wanna make sure to put an air vent in the furthest point of the clay block so that this entire area can get filled with silicone. Uh, not only is this a money saver, but again, it's gonna make the demold and flexing off the mold easier by not having a really thick area of silicone. Now, the material we're using for this mold is the Sorta Clear 12. The reason why I'm using this specific uh, molding rubber is uh, for once I can see into it, it uh, it's clear, it has a low viscosity, it's a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume, and um, it's kind of uh, in a 12 uh, durometer range, which is kind of perfect for a softer side block mold. Now, once you dispense your material, you can go ahead and combine it uh, in a clean mixing container and then mix it thoroughly by scraping the sides, scraping the bottom of your mixing container. And because the material is clear and you can't tell when you mix it thoroughly, I like to transfer it into a secondary clean mixing container, mix it again, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, and then go ahead and pour it into your mold box. As always, pour into the lowest spot of your mold box and allow the rubber itself, the material, to seek its own level. This way it will push any air bubbles away from your model and not trap them on the surface. And as a precaution, I'm going to put some uh, of the oil-based clay around the bottom of our uh, mold box here, just in case there's a small leak. I don't want the entire thing to leak out while I'm not present. The silicone is now allowed to cure for 12 hours. After cure, we can go ahead and remove the uh, Sculptix clay that we used for the block here, so this is the area that we blocked out. 
Uh, I do need something to hold the shape of the mold while it's in the casting process. And I'm just going to go ahead and use some SmoothCast 300Q to fill that void there in our uh, mold. And if you uh, the SmoothCast 300Q is really convenient for something like this because it has a really fast setup. It has a working time of 30 seconds with a cure of four to five minutes. Again, that will be dependent on the mass of material. So in a block like what I'm pouring here, that is going to set up uh, really fast. So that four or five minutes should be sufficient. And you can see the material change the color from, uh, from a tannish uh, to a solid white. And this is now allowed five minutes for a cure. We can go ahead now and remove the mold walls themselves. I'm going to just uh, go ahead and get this removed and then we can start by removing that clay from the second half of our mold. So everything that the clay was until now is going to become the second half of our mold. I'm going to go ahead and slowly remove this. Again, we don't wanna damage the model itself and uh, you can see that I have some vents that I already set up in there and an air vent. But uh, before we go ahead and block the, the mold box back together, I'm going to apply some Ease Release 205 to the silicone itself. And I'm using a dry brush for that. And when applying the Ease Release, you just wanna make sure applying to all the surfaces where the new silicone will be touching. The East Release 205 is allowed to drive for 20 minutes. We can now go ahead and mix the Sorta Clear 12 for the second half of our mold. We're going to repeat the same dispensing and mixing procedure. Once thoroughly mixed, the silicone is again poured in the lowest point of your mold setup and is allowed to basically level itself out, find its own way upwards. Again, that pushes away any air bubbles from your model and ensures that you're not gonna have those trapped on the model so that you're not gonna see them basically in the castings. The silicone is now allowed to cure for 12 hours. Once the silicone is cured, we can go ahead and demold our model. The mold box is removed and the two halves of our silicone mold is, are basically popped apart. The model itself, the lower jar, is removed from our block mold. So you can see it here, all in one piece, and the mold is more or less ready for the casting process. If you would like to see the second part of this two-part video tutorial, the cold casting of the bear skull, you can click in the link above and that will take you to the second half of this project. Now, if you got inspired by this project and you would like to give your own projects a go and need some material, you can visit any one of our distributors around the world. And there you have a step-by-step -step procedure that I use to create these molds of complex anatomic models using some silicone rubber and featuring advanced mold making techniques. Now, let's just go over our project goals. We showed you how to make a two-part cavity pore mold using the dragon skin and the freeform air. We also showed you how to successfully deal with pass-throughs that would otherwise pose complex challenges for your mold as well as making a lightweight mold of the skull itself as well. And we showed you also how to deal with blocking out of sections of your block molds that we did for the lower jaw to save on molding product. Now, if you have an idea about what we should do next, please let us know down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Keep up with our latest mold making, casting, and other videos. Remember to subscribe.